What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have something a little different for me. Today we're actually building a pink PC. Now I've got nothing against pink, it's just usually not a color that I gravitate towards. But like I said in my unboxing video, which if you haven't seen, go back and watch that, someone calls and they want a pink PC, you answer. So that is what I've set out to do today. So let's run through the parts, see what we're gonna be working with. And there's no better place to start than the case. If you didn't see the unboxing video, I encourage you to go back and watch that. This case is the DIY PC Rainbow Flash F4P. It's a standard ATX case that comes with four LED fans. Now we're going all new parts on this and for the most part, current generation. My goal with this PC is to build something that is very powerful and capable today, while also being something that you can upgrade down the line. So let's talk about our power supply. This is the Corsair RM580E. This is an 80 plus gold rated power supply and it's fully modular. Corsair has a fairly solid track record when it comes to power supplies, which is why we went with this. The 850 is something that'll power our GPU and hopefully the next generation or the generation after, depending on where we go. And being fully modular helps save some space in areas that might be a little tight in the case. Our motherboard is the MSI Pro B650P, and this one does come with onboard Wi-Fi. This motherboard at this price point is one of those that comes in with everything you need and nothing you don't. I personally lean AMD for my own rig, and since this is the beginning of their generation, we should have several CPUs that are supported on this socket. So like I said before, good for today, upgradable for tomorrow. For our CPU, we're going with the Ryzen 7 7700X. The CPU has eight cores, 16 threads, and there's a great middle ground depending on if you wanna play or work, this thing's got you covered. For our graphic card, we're going with AMD's Radeon RX 6750 XT. This is the MSI MEC2 variant. It's a two fan card, so it'll fit perfectly in our case. And the 6750s are coming in with 12 gigs of RAM and at a price point that is near unbeatable right now. At the time of filming, AMD hasn't released their current generation mid-tier cards yet, and price to performance this is beating anything that Nvidia has right now. For our RAM, we're going with a dual channel kit of G-Skill Flare X5 DDR5 RAM. This runs at 6000 speed with CL36. No RGB on this kit, but don't worry, we got some of that coming. Next for our hard drive, we're going with Silicon Power's 2TB M.2 drive. This is the Gen 4x4 and is a pretty decent drive that comes in at a lower price point than some of the other comparable models. I've used this in a lot of my builds and haven't had any issues. Now, you've seen this pink case and you see lots of, for lack of a better term, standard parts. Unless you buy something from, I think the brand is Yetzen, it's really difficult to start finding standard parts like motherboards and graphic cards that come in anything other than like black or silver. However, this is the Vitru 5 CPU cooler, and it is very pink. It has some white bumpers on the fans. We might take those off because we don't have a lot of white in the case. Now these are not bad coolers. They are RGB, and I have used them in a few of my builds. I've never used it on a 7700X, so we're gonna see how those two pair together. But we're not done yet. I have not one, but two, three packs of pink fans from Asia Horse. These are RGB, and they'll tie right in with our motherboard. I believe these use a three pin five volt connector. Unlike our CPU cooler, these actually have pink bumpers on there, which I appreciate. And even though these are two totally different brands, that is very close. It's not exact exact, but wow, that is close. And we've got some sparkle on the edges here. I don't know, I think it lights up. There's not actual light tracks that run through, but there is this film over, the sparkly film, and then there's slats in there, so the light from the fan, the RGB light, can actually shine through. That might look good, I've never seen that on a fan before. So like I said, we do have six of these. We're gonna replace the three fans up the front, we're gonna add two fans on top, and replace the exhaust fan here. So for airflow, it's gonna be three intake, three exhaust. Something to note about these fan kits, they do come with a 10 fan hub. So with six, you're barely halfway there. This hub can be connected either via remote, or like I said, connects directly to your motherboard. That's great, so if you're using an older motherboard that doesn't have those headers, or maybe you just have some damaged headers, you still have options. I've been using Asia Horse fans more and more in my builds. They're fairly practical, good looking, and come in at a great price point. And no complaints yet, but if I ever do, I'll let you know. Lastly, where would we be without cable extensions? These are also pink. This pink is a little bolder than the case and fans, but I'm hoping it won't be so noticeable once we get the lights going and everything should help blend together. The caps on these are black and our combs come in 
and black. This is a cloudy clear, it's not clear clear. So I'm wondering if anything, if the black ones would look better because you're going to have like the air filter, the motherboard, like this, the black combs might look better on those. I think I'll try it with those first. What do you think? I've been known to forget parts in my introduction, but I think this is everything. Now for me personally, I am not a fan of filming build montages. I don't have a top-down camera, so the angles are always weird, the camera's always getting in my way, and it just means more editing for me. However, I am thinking about doing a build series that'll be part by part, so if there's something you don't know, like you might not know where or how to insert RAM or a CPU into a motherboard. So I'm thinking about doing short videos, not like YouTube shorts, I'm just talking about regular videos like this, but that focus on one thing, like inserting the CPU, the RAM, your M.2 drives. That's something that interests you, let me know. I'll put out a series like that. So I'm gonna take a break from this and start building. I'll see you in a second. One more thing I wanna show you before I go. Some people don't know this, but most front panels are deceptively easy to take off. A lot of them, especially in cases like this, all you have to do is pull. Now your pull strength, you're gonna to get to like 90% and you're gonna think, ah, I'm gonna break something. That's when you need to pull just a little harder and it'll pop right out. Up top, you'll notice that all of our front IO is on the case, not on the front panel. You can see the seam. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but you can see here that there are these plastic tabs. That's all that's holding this front panel into the case. So a little trick that I've noticed is that if you feel underneath the front panel, you should be able to feel a spot where you can get your hand in. And this one has it. This isn't for airflow. We have the vents up here. So put your hand there, take a firm grasp, and then pops right off for you. These are those tabs I was talking about. This one has six of them, three on each side. Now you can get to your fans, blow out your dust filters, anything like that. Okay, now I'm gonna do the build. I know I said that pink wasn't in my repertoire, but I might have to make an exception for this. This thing turned out so sharp. This is gorgeous. So while you drool over this case, let's talk about some of the specifics. Building inside the case, I had no problem at all. Swapping out the fans was no difficult than on any other case. And I did put these two in last after I put in everything else just for the space, which was a good call. It is a little tight, but like the perfect kind up there because it covers your cables that go up over the top, still gives you enough room to work. There is enough space under the shroud to cover your extra cables. And this last part, I called it before and it turns out it's true. I do wish there was a little more space behind this back panel. It was a little tight getting it on, but we made it. So if you like this case, you're good to go. As for the parts, I'm happy with this configuration and everything seems to be running smooth. During testing, the GPU ran smooth and topped out at 73 degrees. The CPU, on the other hand, was running at 95. Now, conventionally speaking, that does seem high, but multiple sources have reported from AMD that this chip, the Ryzen 7 7700X, should run between 90 and 95 degrees. That's normal. Our testing with Cinebench R23 showed this running at 95, so we're in range. Meanwhile, the noise level was relatively quiet, and that's counting for the six fans, well, seven and eight if you include the CPU and power supply fans. Updating Windows and the BIOS and all of that was no problem at all. One thing I do want to mention is that this board's onboard Wi-Fi was not working out of the box. I did have to go online and download new drivers for it to work. It works now, but it is difficult to go online and download drivers if you don't have online access. So keep that in mind if you have an extra Wi-Fi adapter like I do, or if you don't, you might have to hardline in to get that. I have everything set to pink, obviously, but you can change these fans to any color you like or shut them off completely. Honestly, it looks good either way. And like I mentioned before, and I will mention this one more time, the cable extensions we have are a little darker, but I am pleasantly surprised how close the pink is between the Vitru cooler, the Asia Horse fans, and the DIY PC case. The color is so close, if you had told me those were all the same brand, I'd believe you. But I don't know what else to say. This is a beautiful, sleek, and powerful 1080p, 1440p machine that's gonna last you for years. And when you are ready to upgrade because of our core components, like the power supply and the motherboard, upgrading is gonna be a breeze. So what's next? We've done black PCs, we've done white PCs, we've now done a pink PC. Do components come in any more colors? I don't know, if they do, maybe we'll do one of those builds. 
before I let you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, find me out on social media. You know what I look like. And I'll catch you in the next video, hopefully very soon. Bye.